Hi friends, and welcome to our program, The Birds of Winter. This program is presented by the Friends of the Blue Hills. My name is Gail, and I am the volunteer and program manager of the Friends. If you're not familiar with the Friends of the Blue Hills, we are a nonprofit that exists to preserve and protect the Blue Hills reservations, natural beauty, diverse natural habitats, and many recreational opportunities. We primarily do this in three ways. We do trail maintenance and invasive plant removal. We offer public education programs that teach visitors about the park, and this program is an example of one of those educational programs that we provide. We also advocate for and protect the park's land and resources. We're gonna jump right into our program today by talking about a bird that most people recognize. We're gonna start with the Northern Cardinal. The bird that we see on the left of the slide here is a female northern cardinal. And northern cardinals are really neat because they have a habit of staying together year round. So the pair, a male and a female, um, are almost always seen together. As a matter of fact, if you look closely at this picture, you'll actually see blurred in the background is the red male cardinal. These birds are very easily recognized uh, because of both their shape uh, with the crest and their coloring um, and they're very common uh, in backyard feeders uh, and also in the reservation. Another bird that we see commonly in the Blue Hills Reservation and at backyard feeders is the black capped chickadee. We like to say that the chickadee is one of the local birds that says its own name. One of its seasonal calls sounds like chickadee chickadee dee. Uh, so if you think of that when you see one, they're very active little birds and they are seed eaters. This handsome fellow is actually one of the common residents that we see in and around our bird feeders, but they're also extremely common in the Blue Hills Reservation. The reservation has lots and lots of oaks, and blue jays love acorns and other nuts and seeds. Uh, blue jays will actually hide or cache acorns that they gather in the fall to eat later in the winter. So much like a squirrel, blue jays like to prepare for the cold weather. The dark-eyed junco is a bird that we only see in our area during the winter time. The junco is a type of sparrow and it's one of the most common forest birds in North America. These guys are also seed eaters and you'll notice their bright dark eyes as they dart in and out of your feeder. The morning dove is a bird that we usually don't see at our feeders, but more likely on the ground under our feeders. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I liked this photo as an illustration for the morning dove. Uh, it shows one on the snow on the ground. And this is often how we see them either in the reservation or around bird feeders. Uh, doves tend to like the smaller seeds that are provided in seed mix. So things like millet that some other birds don't care for um, are actually is a great food for the morning dove. Um, I like to note that the morning dove is called the morning dove, not after the time of day, um, but for mourning or sadness because they have sort of a, a slow mournful call. You may see this bird in your backyard, um, more particularly so if you put out suet feeders. This is a white-throated nuthatch, 
And this is actually a pretty common way to see nut hatches. Um, their feet have two toes facing forward and two toes facing backwards. So they can really easily hop up and down trees head first. Uh, they love to eat insects, but in the winter, they will also eat uh, seeds, particularly if they're mixed with high protein and high fat suet. So uh, you can find them in your backyard, most definitely. The Carolina Wren is one of the little brown birds that we see in and around feeders in the wintertime. They're distinctive because they have a roundish looking body and a long tail, and they often hold their tail at an upward angle like this bird is as they perch. The tufted titmouse is another common bird that we see in and around our backyard. Uh, it can be told from some of those other small gray and brown birds by the very dark eye that they have and the little crest on top of their heads. These guys like to eat insects in the warm weather, but they do eat seeds and suet in the winter time. An interesting habit that this little bird has is they like to hoard seeds. So if you have a moment to watch your bird feeder in the backyard, you may notice that tit mice are flying to your feeder, leaving with one seed at a time and rapidly coming back to your feeder for another single seed. Uh, tit mice like to have their own little winter store of food and they'll usually shell uh, the seed or nut that they're hiding before they hide it. So that's kind of an interesting behavior to observe if you do have a backyard feeder. So we know that there are things that habitats provide for all living things. So birds are no exception. In order for birds to be happy and healthy, there are four requirements they need from their habitat. In general categories, we call those food, water, space, and shelter. And birds' wild habitats can provide all these things, but we as human beings can also provide these in and around our homes to encourage birds to consider our backyards as their habitats. And one of the ways that a lot of us do that is by providing seed or seed and suet, and sometimes even seed suet and um, fruit and nuts for different varieties of birds. So in this photo, we see starting on the left, a female Northern Cardinal, a blue jay, and then a male northern cardinal. Uh, it looks like they're eating black sunflower seed, which is a very popular general seed to attract lots of different birds to your yard. We mentioned uh, suet. A lot of birds that are insect eaters in the warmer months, if they winter over in our area, need a diet that's high in fat and protein. So leaving out suet cakes that are actually studded with nuts and seeds can attract birds such as this woodpecker. Another thing that's very important, especially during cold spells, is water. So birds need water to drink, and believe it or not, some birds like to bathe in water, even in the winter when it's really cold. So in this photo, we see a uh, pottery dish or a terracotta dish filled with water. And we have one of our late winter, well, two of our late winter birds here. On the left is a male Eastern bluebird and on the right is a female Eastern bluebird. Um, even um, on a daily basis or when the weather allows, 
to put out a basin or a container of water for birds is a great thing to attract them to your yard. For safety, it's a nice idea to put a stone or brick in the middle of the water, um, just so uh, it allows the birds to have better footing and not fall into the water. So lots of folks like to put out bird houses so birds have places to build their nests and raise their young in the spring. But it's a nice idea to leave your bird houses out over the winter because many smaller birds will actually shelter and get protection from the wind and the cold in bird houses during the winter. If you don't have bird houses up and want to provide a comfortable habitat um, and your family celebrates Christmas, you can actually put your discarded Christmas tree in your backyard and it provides shelter again from the wind and the cold. You can leave your tree on the ground like these trees here, or you can actually prop it up between other trees and bushes. And even though the tree will dry out eventually, it does provide um, protection from the weather. Another thing that we can think about is to provide plants in our yard that provide food for our bird friends year round. So two examples that I have here are a berry bearing small tree or shrub, the winter berry holly, and holly will actually hold its berries throughout the winter. So birds can enjoy those from December all the way to the next spring. Coneflowers and black eyed Susans are good examples of plants that we can have in our yard that look pretty to us, uh, provide resources for pollinators such as bees and butterflies. And then if you leave the seed heads standing for the winter, birds who are seed eaters love to take advantage of those seeds in the winter time. During today's slideshow, any uncredited photos were used courtesy of a website called Creative Commons. And all the used photos are actually uh, noted here. We'd like to invite everyone who has seen this uh, PowerPoint presentation to consider becoming part of the Better Forest Challenge. The Better Forest Challenge is a great way for families to get involved in citizen science and help the Blue Hills. Um, if you like taking photos, this might be the citizen science opportunity for you. It's a very simple process. You would begin by, I, by downloading the iNaturalist app that's free in the App Store or on Google Play. Once you have that on your phone or tablet, go to our website at www.friendsofthebluehills.org and go to our volunteer page. You'll see an opportunity to join the Better Forest Challenge. Fill out that short form and submit it and we'll send you an invitation. Whenever you visit the Blue Hills Reservation, you can take photos of animals and plants and those will be recorded in a global database that will help scientists make decisions about how to keep the Blue Hills Reservation healthy. I want to thank you for joining me today for this PowerPoint presentation and don't miss our last family winter program which will be offered on February 18th and that's called Winter Survival. And to register for that program, you can go to our website at www.friendsofthebluehills.org. Uh, thank you again. My name is Gail. And if you have any questions or comments, please uh, reach out to me at gail, G-A-I-L, at friendsofthebluehills.org. Thank you so much and have a great day.